How did you actually um how did you actually meet Pac? I met Pac at uh at this club. They were throwing a birthday party for me. Okay. And my nigga G George, a comedian from Harlem, brought him brought him to my table. He said he wanted to, he told G George, who that nigga with all the champagne over there and all the women? G George, that's my nigga Jack. He said, yeah, man, you want you wanna meet him? He said, yeah, so he started to walk with G George. He said, no 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 no. I gotta tell him first, homie. Then you, right. then you come see me. <laughs> so yo, we gonna bring to, to the stage a brother that's one of Russell Simmons' personal favorites, <laughs> and he's a wild boy. So brace yourself. He, he's from Brooklyn. <laughs> yo, give it up for G. George. If you tuned in to me, you watching Gully TV, I have a special guest today, man. It's been a long time coming. This name was mentioned during the course of my monumental Haitian Jack documentary. He's known as the comedian who introduced Tupac Shakur to Haitian Jack. G. George, welcome to Gully TV. Hey, 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 what it is, Big T? What's good? What's good? I um I appreciate you taking the time. You know, let me run a few questions by you. Uh give me a little bit on your background before you get to talking about, you know, all your polo and all that kind of shit. Just <laughs> just uh, give me some um you know, give me give me a little bit on your background and how you got into entertainment, your first break. Go ahead. The mic's yours. Well, um all right, well first of all, um I came from like, you know, I come from the 70s era. I come from 77, the blackout, like when hip hop was first starting. That's when I ran away from home. That's when I got outside. I was in the street for real. I was outside for real. So I started meeting everybody from then on. And, you know, you're nine years old. And you ain't, you don't know the street, so you got a front. So all I knew was the power of the punch. Wherever it was hot, if it's banging over here in Flatbush, if it's banging in bed it's bang, I'm there. You know, I just wasn't taught nothing, you know what I mean? So I had to learn that. I made a lot of mistakes. But I had a lot of cats that, you know, used to teach me, you know, the right way. But when I fucked with the cats who was middle bracket dudes or dudes just coming up, you know, the cats with the scripts in their back pocket, they really ain't real niggas. But yeah. I got around yeah. them niggas, I made a lot more mistakes because they peak game and they see I was green. You know, the dudes that was really getting money was trying to push me away from me the game, you know? Right. You know, like the old timers did, yo, go ahead, man, this ain't for you, shorty, you know? Yeah. So, I'm, I done did the group home shit, the Mount Loretta's over there in, in Wu-Tang, I done did the, 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 the shit over there, or, or, or covered in house shit, I done did DFY, did all that shit. And then, you know, when you running around in the streets, you start knowing all the big heads and everybody, they used to call me a cow surfer. I done slept on every Big Willie nigga couch there is. <laughs> Wait, that, hold on, hold on, G, hold on. Was that, was that due to relationships that you established in the juvenile homes and shit like that? Nah, it was just being funny. What I learned, every king has a court gesture. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So every time I got around niggas, I did something that his lieutenant couldn't do. I made him laugh. Okay. You know what I mean? And then I realized that Jewel kept me alive because I used to be up in every bitch house because I needed shelter. Mm -hmm. And I used to have to spend a night with bitches that looked like Joe Frazier, man. Like, for real, son. I was, it was fucked up. All you right. know, I had a chick look just like Mike Tyson with nappy hair, same face, everything. Bitch fight, all that. Scars on her face, all that shit. And I had to stay at her house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was a young nigga. And once I learned everything was going on, I learned I got bad bitches. So a lot of big willy niggas like me for that. Yeah, like, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to interject. I know what that's like. 
when I when I'm in my travels with Gully TV, they have no problem taking me along because mm-hmm. they know I knock a bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, I I get him, man, for real. I I put a wig on a pig, you dig? Like right. I don't play with it, man. I get a UFO in a second, ugly fat nose. Like, <laughs> I need to play like that way. I ain't playing, All like, right? Because I gotta survive, right? But I seen niggas paying bitches because. You know, they lingo was lazy, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I had a spectacular vernacular. They had to listen to me all day Talk long. that shit, G. George. Talk <laughs> that shit. I to about to make them laugh, man. I had them laugh. I'm still in that. Spectacular, spectacular <laughs> vernacular. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this portion of the interview out so nobody ever heard you say that shit. <laughs> it's my... <laughs> Spectacular vernacular. Come on with it, man. <laughs> so, so anyway, make a long story short. <laughs> I had a problem, though. It was like, you know, you ever watch Carol Burnett? And it's a beautiful show. It's spectacular. They got comedians. They got dancers. They got guest stars. They do skits. They do all this. They take you through a whole world for about an hour and a half. And then she go, I'm so glad we had this time together. And the whole auditorium is empty and she mopping the stage. That was me. When everybody go in the house, when the party's over, and all that shit, and all the fronting, and the cars, and the clothes, and the holes, and all that, I'm out in the streets looking crazy. Because okay. I had no credit. Okay. You know? So, what I did was, I started getting high. I start being with the underground people, the mole people. I start, man, I done been through it. Sleeping on roofs, all that shit. So, then, I would get an outfit or whatever here and there with my man Kev, boosting Kev, and then I start doing my numbers, but... Hold on, hold on, hold on. That name rings bells. Boosting Kev. Yeah, boosting Kev from Brooklyn. Tell, before you go on with with your story, tell people Mm -hmm. who boosting Kev was and his significance in that trade. Okay, boosting Kev, right? My man Kev, he was... Put it this way, he was a sleeping giant. He was a musical genius who who know how to make beats. He had a four track that make it sound like a, a 48 track. This boy was a fucking sample beast. But in order to get his shit, his equipment and all that, he had the money, so he had to steal it. All right. So this boy, he, he, he was a beast stealing, but he wanted to get the most for the mission. So he came up with this shit called a Lizzie bag. And the Lizzie bag is you grab a bag as big as you, like a big giant Macy's bag, uh-huh. and cut it down on both sides. So now it's long, right? Uh-huh. And you put aluminum foil all on it. And then you put duct tape. And then you flip it over and do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then you sew the sides back up. Then you put that bag in another big, uh, Macy's bag or whatever and then you roll it up and you go inside the store we go to the store you just take a whole rack of shit and fold it over and put it in a bag and roll the bag up at the top and walk right out the store see the aluminum stops the alarms from igniting right. so we in and out of the store all day talk that shit they, man they depending on the alarms to go off and we, we would snatch something in New York, in Midtown or whatever, because it was Scandinavians. We used to be in there wrecking Scandinavians. You know, um, uh, uh, there was a couple other spots we used to wreck. You know, PFOs, shit like that. But, uh, Spiegels. But, Hermans, we shut that down. Us and a couple of niggas from Roosevelt Projects. Them niggas, Black and Knowledge and BJ and all. These niggas was off the hook. But Kev got smart. Kev was like a, a fucking Christopher Columbus to this shit. He liked to go far and abroad. Okay. Austin Plaza, Livingston, Woodbridge, Rockville, Center Shore Hills, Little Brick, Thomas Mall, Somerville, Upper Derby, Miami. Oh, man, he was a beast. Willowbrook Mall, all that shit. He was a beast. Tyson's uh, Corner. Oh, yo, he was a beast. He was the first one to find all these spots. Okay. See, the problem is... We used to take these little niggas out there and we used to call them bag boys. Mm-hmm. We used to put all the shit inside the bags and let them take the shit out the store, go in the bushes, and you know them big army um, um, duffel bags? Yeah. 
take everything out of the Lizzie bag, put in a duffel bag, and then crawl back in the store and pass us the bag. But we already got two other Lizzie bags waiting for them to carry out. <laughs> so this was a, a, a well oiled machine. We yeah. going in there, we staying in there from 12 to 3. In and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. All day long, just killing them. Right. To the store almost empty. You know what I mean? And and then once we did that, we take all of that shit back, sell everything half price. Now, let me ask you this. What do you have to say? Because uh, it's, it's ironic that we speaking about boosting and hustling and shit. I was on a live yesterday, and I was sharing a story about meeting one of the... Um, the low lights from Philadelphia when I was young and in a juvenile home, and they was like the first time encountering somebody. That was my first time encountering people who glamorized the fact that they stole. Um, where, I, where, I, where, I, where, I'm, where I'm from, you know, it's pretty much you know a bunch of drug boys and shit like that, and we bought clothes from the boosters, but um, it wasn't like and it wasn't like a masculine hustle or hustle so to speak until I went further into criminality and started to meet you know there's different ways of getting to some money and shit but what do you have to say about you know the sexualization well, of that actual hustle well it's levels to the shit a nigga who really don't got heart to go snatch your money bag or snatch a diamond or break a jewelry store window or till tap or jostle right he, he gonna sneak thief. You know what I mean? Right. So, Cat was a super sneak thief. It, it's your love of heart. Because what I mean by that is, you got to play all four corners of the board. You know, if I take this, bow. That's one corner. I'm going to get that thing. It's another corner. Then I'm going to be this nigga, bow. Then I'm back to square one, right? Uh -huh. But if you're really looking at the board, take this, bow. I'm going to be this, boom. Then I'm going uh, But if I get caught, and if I get caught, then where I'm going? Oh, I just took the mother load. Oh, they sending me up north. You know what I mean? Right. A lot of niggas ain't built for that punishment. So the punishment fit the crime, fit the criteria, fit the character of the individual. Okay, got it. So you, you know, you have an ape come home and he a gorilla. He come and go tear something down because if he get caught, he going to run to jail. So it don't matter. Half of them niggas, they live in jail. You know what I mean? They come home for vacation. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Okay. You know what I mean? So, real talk. All right. You know? So, so the thing with Kevin them, uh -huh. Kevin them was doing what they knew was going to get them DJ sets, which was going to keep them fly, which was going to get them some bitches. Okay. And that's how me and him click, because I ain't had to steal for no bitches. <laughs> I mean, I got a three-letter word in my verbal arsenal that every player pimp and they mama should have. Mm -hmm. Should have this word in your arsenal. It's called lie. Talk. My father once told me, man, you could tell a bitch a beautiful lie instead of the ugly truth. Nobody wants to hear the ugly truth. There you go. Dress that motherfucker up. Right. You know what I mean? And I tell her make a lie for everybody I meet. You know what I mean? I tell a ugly bitch she gorgeous. Tell a gorgeous bitch you ain't shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how you do it. You got to keep everybody off balance and then dance to your shit because it look like they drunk. Mm -hmm. But if you keep it straight with a motherfucker, she going to knock you off balance. So you got to be ahead of the game. As soon as it come out your mouth, everything bullshit. Right. And guess what? Bullshit is entertaining. It is. In case of point, I bullshit my way to TV. Let's talk about that. The, 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 the comedian is born. When was the comedian born and when did you make your separation from being a booster to going off into entertainment, which, you know, almost guarantees a much bigger bag? Well, I got tired of getting shot. <laughs> First of all, I was doing stupid shit around crazy niggas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I was doing nothing around other crazy niggas and still got shot. I got blamed for some shit I ain't do. Got shot. Uh, I did some other stupid shit. I, I took a nigga a a a mixtape, and I was almost 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 dead. Almost blew my fucking head off for that, you know. So mm -hmm. I start learning. Yeah, nigga, this ain't it. You know what I mean? I got to stop this. So one day I'm getting high again. So I'm in a park hustling some player niggas. It was some shit. I forgot the name of this club, but it was on 30th, and it was on 
second, and six. The 23rd used to have a library right there. It's 22nd and 6th. Powerhouse or some shit. It was some shit. I don't know the name of this shit. But across the street, it was a, a, a parking lot area, and I seen Russell Simmons. And Russell Simmons had all them old school niggas with him from Queens. You know, the Kangos and the Adidas and all that stupid shit they had on. Right. All that ancient shit. <laughs> right. So I went over there, and I was like, Russell Simmons, play, play. But mind you, this the crackish me talking. This the I'm hype. Mouth running a mouth, hundred miles an hour. Right. Because I'm trying to get some money, you know, so I can get high. So I'm like, hey, Russell Simmons, what's going on, nigga? I see you, man. You're chilling. He said, hey, hey, I'm chilling. I said, Baldy locks and three heads. Look at you right now. You still got that bitch. She fine as frogs. Hey, nigga, I'm running my mouth. So he opened. Mm -hmm. He like, nigga, where you from? I said, I'm from my mama. Nigga, you want to know my son? Dollar, nigga. You know what I mean? I'm going in on him. So mm -hmm. he's like, yo, you a funny dude. I like, you know, I got a show coming up, right? I said, a show? Nigga, I wasn't impressed with that tough of the leather faggot said, said punk old shit, y'all niggas did that get around me. And he laughing like a motherfucker. Oh He's like, you got any jokes? And I start telling some jokes. And he gave me his number. He said, call me. I got some shit going on. I said, yeah, nigga, but I'm broken in a faggot's wrist. Nigga, who knows something? Nigga, with all that money, man. And nigga gave me a thousand dollars right there. He went in his pocket, gave me the money. I was Ooh. like, ah, I'm smoking, I'm smoking, I was gone. But I kept that number in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me call this nigga. So he was living on 4th and Broadway on top of Tower Records in the village. He was living on the roof of the building on top of Tower Records. And it's a, it's, a, it's a triplex on top of that that Cher used to have that he bought for, I think it's 1.5 or something like that. Okay. He bought that. So... He was living there. So I used to come, and the doorman should let me right in because he already knew I was coming. I said, what? So I was up there with this nigga, you know, living it up for a while and all that. And then he started taking me to Peppermint Lounge. Then I met all these niggas, Bernie Mac, all these niggas. I'm with all these niggas. And I'm like, where the fuck am I? These niggas been doing comedy their whole life. I don't know nothing about this shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All I know is I'm running my mouth just to get me some money. But I didn't peak game. And I still was running around with the wrong people and still getting high. But it's funny how God puts you in all the right spots. He keep trying to show you signs. Yo, nigga, you in now. You ain't got to do that no more. And you thinking, I got to keep doing this so I can stay in. And I did. I had to. You know? I had to, it was like certain rappers, you know, if they not high, they not this person that we love. <laughs> they have to metamorphosis into that person. And they can't if they ain't high. If they sober, two people come into their concert. You know what I mean? If they high, then the beast come out. And that's the motherfucker we love. But guess what happens? It's like Daffy Duck. When Daffy Duck told you, Yo, I got this trick I want to show you. I drink this, uh, this uh, toxic mortified, and I drink this other sucker shit, and I put some other dynamite in me, and then he light a match and blow the fuck up and say, the only thing about it, I only could do this shit one time. And you see his soul floating around? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the same shit. Like, these niggas can't keep doing it, because after a while, the old A's kick in. Right. And now you can't keep getting high, you old. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And because you're going to keep going backwards, you're going to keep trying to act like you young while you old and high. Mm -hmm. And then here come the trouble because you arrogant now and you think you better than everybody because the money got you thinking that. Okay. Because no matter how high you is, you looking at niggas like you broke ass, faggot ass, back alley tramp. Look at you, nigga. You ain't got nothing on me, tramp. Fuck out of here. You see me, you see you, then you popping shit. Mm -hmm. But you broke in a state of mind. The money is an illusion. The money ain't shit. But 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 some paper you took off a tree and put some old slave owners on it and lied and said, God, we trust with the all-seeing eye on the motherfucker. You know what I mean? Right. That's all that shit is. They, the money ain't nothing but the paper they used to give you back in the days when you go to the gold rush. No they doubt. take your gold. And they give you that receipt. Okay. So you use... They gave so much of that shit out, they ain't nobody got no gold. They're just taking the receipts. <laughs> so look, all right. So let me get this right. 
no formal training, all charisma and gab game. You got your opportunity. Got your opportunity with soul snatching. And so you got an opportunity with Russell Simmons. Landed you in his apartment. Yeah. Okay. And then once I was doing that, right? Then I start doing stupid shit like telling niggas, "Oh, Russell Simmons a faggot. These niggas are gay." And da 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 And it get back to niggas. You know what I mean? Right. But that be the crackhead talking. That be the crackhead jumping rope spawn with a nigga ear, right. so I can get in his pocket. Caught everything, and he going back to report. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, ain't that a bit? So that's bridges being burned. But then I kept getting in a bunch of videos and shit like that. Then prize had me running around. I was running around with Tony Pope, the track masters. I was running around. I was running around with you name them. We man, we used to be in that hit factory. I used to be up in there with Jack and them. I didn't see oh, anything oh, that oh. is to be seen. Hold on, I was gonna yeah. ask you. Once you mentioned prize, you talking about prize from the Fugees. Yeah, that's what, my boys. Okay, you 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 appeared on some skits, right? Yeah, I did a bunch of skits with him. I did a um, couple of videos with him too. Was you on the score? Nah, I didn't do that. That, that album. Okay. Uh, me and Prize, we was cool then, but we got tight when he went solo. All right, I'm gonna just keep it funky with you. Um, based on my research. Prize. Um, well, he was a good nigga. He was a trooper too. Like, you know, he was an I dude. You know, I cracked a joke with him here and there. But Pop, a couple of times, I seen him in a restaurant somewhere in a village or something. And then me and him just start clicking because every time he had to give me my props one day, it was a bit so bad. He kept looking at it. I said, man, ain't nothing. I ran over to him. I told him some stupid shit. I said, yo, listen. Me and my man want to know something. We ain't nobody trying to rap to you or nothing, but we, we just want to know. Because you are fine by basis, hunk of feminine multitude. We just want to know. <laughs> who's sucking a fart out your ass? And the bitch fell out. You know what I mean? Right. So he don't know what I'm saying. All he knows is I stopped the bitch and got a laugh. So he started walking over to us like George Jefferson. He's like, nigga, <laughs> who is this pretty lady right here you with? Did it there. And start kicking it. From then on, we had a relationship like that. Like, he had seen me, nigga, where the bitches at? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And then we were to a party or something here and there, but he ain't had no problem with no bitches. No bitches was on his dick. Right. It's just that he just, just it was like, it was like a, 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 a the chase. He loved the chase. It's like a, a, a dog chasing a fire station, a fire engine. Okay. If he stopped it, he wouldn't know what the fuck to do with it. He just liked to chase the shit. No you doubt. know what I mean? No doubt. And, and that's how the bitches was to him. They used to just chase this nigga, and then once he stopped to talk to him, bitch would be stuck like a dead headlight. Yeah. And I used to laugh, but what he used to like is I should do the same shit, and I'm not famous. No you doubt. You know what I mean? No doubt. It is to fuck him up. So one day we over there at this club, and he coming in the club, and Jack having a party there. I ain't know Jack was having a party there. Okay. I'm just getting in the club. But so it, well, hold on, hold on, G, hold on, G. Yeah. But it wasn't Manhattan proper. That wasn't the name of the club. Nah, that wasn't Manhattan. Can proper. you recall? The, can you recollect the name of the club? This club was on. I uh, you know where that big, big library is across the street from Madison Square Garden? Absolutely. Is around a corner from it, going toward Ninth. So that's Eighth and like Thirty Third. So okay. it's like Thirty Third between Eighth and Ninth. There's a little club they had there. You know what I mean? So. We goes up in there. It's mad celebrities in there and all that. This and that. So I see the nigga party. He like, T. George, yo, what up? I'm like, yo, what's good, nigga? What up? He said, ain't nothing. He said, mm, a lot of bitches in here. I said, yeah, they smell you. They see you. Me and him just kicking it. And he said, who over there, though? And then I look, and Jack called me. He said, T. George. I said, yo, what up, Jack? He said, who that? That's where all the bitches was at. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going over there. He's like, yo, who that? Who your man right there? I was like, hold on, let me go over here and we talk to this nigga. We see what's going on over here. Cause I ain't know this nigga had a party till he told me. You know what I mean? Till I went over there. And he wanted to meet him and all this and that. He was like, hey, look, man, your man got it like that. And Jack had a bunch of shiny shit on, and you know, he's looking like him. And then them niggas got the kicking in. And the rest is history. You know? Damn. That's how that went. Okay. So, but Pac was in the spot when you got there that night. Yeah, Pac was here. He was in the... No, he was coming.
coming in. Oh, okay, y'all coming in. He was coming in. in and I was coming in. All right, got it. I didn't got know it. he was coming up there. Like I told you, I'm always running in, 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 in a club or in the streets or something. It's always in some type of transition. Right. How did him say, I see you in the traffic. Yeah, that's what uh, okay. I always see him in the traffic. You know? Take me to your debut on Def Comedy Jam. Oh, I was with this cat, Supreme. He got a brother named Ty Kim. What we used to do is we used to sell slum. We used to be out of town. We used to go to Lenny's. And we used to go get this stamp twenty. 14 carat, right? Mm -hmm. We had that authentic brass that you could put in bleach or you could put it in ammonia. And all that shit gonna do is make it shine like a penny. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but don't put the bleach and ammonia together and put it in this shit because it's gonna turn into the Incredible Hulk. It's gonna be green than the motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so we used to be out there slumming niggas down crazy. We used to, we used to tell niggas, we used to go to um, Alamo, Jersey and go get a rent a car and take turns driving down there. We had the map and all that shit. And we used to hit the city and we used to get a homeless nigga and get him ten dollars to show us where them where them where them, where them money boys at. Where, where them dope boys. Take us where the dope boys at. Mm -hmm. And we used to go around the dope boys because you know we street niggas and we know how to beat them in their head. And we know that's real money right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We ain't gotta worry about going away. They got it right there. You know, and it's dirty money anyway. So give us that. We'll we'll be your uh, your laundry mat for you. <laughs> give us that money, nigga, right. and take this receipt called slum jury. Yeah. <laughs> so we beat niggas in the head like crazy. So one day we supposed to be on a mission, and I'm telling the nigga Prem, I was like, Yo, I gotta go do this show, nigga. He's like, Nah, nigga, we gotta this, we gotta that. I was like, Well, fuck you. I'm gonna go do what I gotta do. He's like, all right, I'm coming with you, but we're going to this mission after that. I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. So I went, and me and him were smoking mad woolers. <laughs> flies, motherfucker. You know, and we living out of the trunk of a, a BMW from 86 up. So this is 90, 91. Okay. We ain't all type of different shit now. And at the end of the day, we still getting high. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So we goes up in a motherfucker. I see Martin and them niggas. Everybody got some shit for us. Clothes, all this shit, with the put on all that. But they got bullshit. So I take supreme, some supreme clothes. I say, yo, give me this, man. I want to put this on. It was a used damage suit. And then I had some felines or some shit. And this nigga Martin switched my sneakers. <laughs> playing games with me, you know what I mean? In the back. Because we was playing stupid with each other. So when I come out, after he introduced me and I'm walking like a player, yeah. I'm walking funny because my feet is balled up like boxing gloves. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> my shoes was like a five and I wore like an eight and a half. Right. So I went out there with them shits on and I told the joke that Russell wanted me to tell all the time, that Superman joke. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I ain't had no other jokes. I ain't had no, 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 nothing, nothing. I had that street lingo, but if I'm sober, you ain't going to see it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know? So the whole thing is, like a lot of rappers, they can't rap or get creative unless they smoke weed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They can't do it. I believe you know? that. I believe that. And then there's a lot of niggas that can't do a lot of shit. Like a lot of comedians can't get on stage unless they got some liquor. It got to be a cup sitting on that stool. Right. You know what I mean? Right. They, they can't do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's something that got to clear them nerves. And, and help your creative process. Your memory bank kick in. You know, you see somebody funny and you got jokes for them. You know, you got a metaphor for this, for that. But if your juice ain't in you, if the gas ain't in the car, it ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? Right. So I blew up everywhere but that stage. I done two pep and last, everything down, down, fire, set of the flame. They're standing ovation everywhere. Till I got there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then the way this nigga big me up, Russell Simmons, personal favorite. I'm like, oh god, this motherfucker. You talk about the pressure. And then right in front row, Preem sitting up there shaking a fucking fake chain. Like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> 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 too, too much of bullshit. It's a movie. You know what I mean? All right. So, so how many um how many how many appearances did you have actually get off during the series? Um, I just did that. The streets had me, had me hard. Like, 
the streets had me. And then from there, I, I went to How Can I Be Down with Poost and Kev down in Miami. Yeah, I remember we was that. On, we was on Collins, and we was in the store, and my man Frizz, he was down there. I seen him. I was like, Frizz, what's up? What you doing down here? He's like, nigga, say hip hop motherfucker. This travel gas. You think I ain't gonna be here? Right. And Flair showed me how to get some rubber bands and put them at the bottom of your um your pants, mm -hmm. and then go in the liquor store and put all type of motherfucking liquor inside your pants and let it slide down your leg. Mm -hmm. So we got man champagne, all type of shit. <laughs> and then we cowboy walking out the door. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. I've been some real crazy niggas, man. Let, let me let me ask you this, my nigga. We going over the fashion now, all right? You so you. What I get, what I get from you is you are a run of the mill, real deal, New York City nigga. You got the gab, oh, yeah. you got the gab game. You got the charisma. You got the hustle. You can play. OT, you can you can rock a variety of roles. When you mentioned Jostler, I already knew what it was. And she, can, my father, my father was one. I, I reveal that to you. I got it. Yeah, you reveal that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father was one. So, um, all right. At which point did you incur this taste for you know these these vintage um, fashion brands? Was it during the course of you running with Boost and Kev? Yeah, but before Kev, a cat that taught me a lot was. Was, it was a dude named Terrell from Fulton and Kingston. His grandmother owned uh, Blimpies. Mm -hmm. She owned the church. She owned, and I'm talking, he used to go to Boys and Girls High. So this early 80s, like 81, 82, he had all the quarter fills, all the British walkers, all the wallabies, all the clocks, all the fila suits, all the head coats, all the suede fronts. All the, he had everything, all the sheepskins, all the bombers. Well, he had everything. Then it went up to mink coats and fila suits and Christian Dior sweatsuits. And he had all the motherfucking guests. He had all the polo. He had all the gazelles. He had all the Cartiers. He had all the polo frames. He had all the specs. He had everything. The boy was sport. You know what I mean? Right. I heard him sport. He had a Cadillac, cool snack, diamond in the back, a big mad wheels, all that <laughs> shit. He's 16, 17 years old. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, all that shit. Like, he was a fly nigga. The gold teeth, the big jewelry, all that. And one of the first niggas going down to D.C. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, he got murdered down there, too. Damn. You know? But Damn. him, everybody knew him. Dementio, all of them knew him. Everybody knew him. You know, he was a fly nigga. He was the first dude that I kind of liked his style because he looked just like me. You know what I mean? So I just went around saying that was my brother. Okay. You know? Yeah. And he had two cats with him, a cat named Todd and a cat named Flip. And he just had to be the, the flyest threesome you ever seen. These niggas, Flip had a different style. Flip had the, a different world style. Like College. Uh, yeah, he had that, that Gumby hair dude, and he had the Chuck Taylors, and he had the, the Benetton. Like, that was that was his shit. But okay. the nigga game was super. Okay. That nigga. Woo! Flip skinny nigga with teeth. This nigga game, it's like he had an old man in him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's a young nigga, skinny, weighed about 100 pounds, but his his mouth, woo! Game, tight, strong. Oh. Yeah, bitches running in stores, taking me coats, all types of shit. He's a beast. You know what I mean? I don't get a <laughs> chance to, I don't get a chance to, you know, to show my shit, but. Um, me and you, me and you, we a lot more alike than I, um, I, I originally anticipated and shit just by us gabbing right now. Um, that's one of my most lethal weapons, my mouthpiece. I speak about it often. I talk about my aptitude in my mouthpiece. I run circles around niggas. And I, yeah, you gotta tell me. I already knew that, I though. That's to, why I clicked with you. I was able like, to. Being like, being like. No doubt. I was consistently embraced by guys like you, man. Um. So yeah, we're on the same page. The fashion so you, you encountered these three guys and they were just electrifying with the fresh game and the gab. And then it was a dude named Ben. Black Ben. African Ben from Albany Projects. Malik. Okay. Malik with the with the with the he had the Patrick sneakers, the missiles. Mm -hmm. He had all the valleys that you was I mean from the sneakers to the trap sneakers to the the all suede toe to the to the, to the 
the competitions to the guests with the leather in the back to all of that shit. And that's when I see Putty on lot on Union. That's when Pappy was running around. That's when I know I know Pappy, like Glaze said, I know Pappy when he had a Caesar. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know Pappy way back. So yeah. you, knew, you you knew him before he 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 went over to the Bebos and with the Patois and you know took the whole Jamaican. Yeah, yeah. See the the illest Jamaican niggas that we knew was on Lincoln and Troy. You know what I mean? And and the next block is St. John's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and go over two more blocks, St. John's and Utica, that's where, you know, uh, uh, Dave Lowe and all them, Booster Billy, you know, them are some of the illest low lies in the world. Like, God bless the dead, Booster Billy. Right. But right there, Lincoln and Troy, the illest Jamaicans that we knew at the time was King Allah, Born and Dead Bond, and all them niggas down the hill called the Shower Posse. So hold on, 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 G. G. Some of these um, Rastafarian guys, they were taking on five percent attributes. Oh, what? You heard what I said? <laughs> this is this is new. <laughs> this is some new shit right here. This is new and this is interesting. You, <laughs> you get into this thing and you gonna have a whole bunch of hits, boy. <laughs> yeah, it's deep. Like it, what? So uh, this is new, man. The Jamaican posses were taking on. The, was they was they fucking with the math too, or they just liked it? Yeah, them? yeah, Damn. yeah. That's a lot of them culture, niggas, man. Them niggas, yo, you gotta understand this. I'm gonna drop a jewel right now, and I don't give a fuck about how nobody feel about the truth. You know what I mean? For real, put your bulletproof vest on if this shit gonna hurt you. Hip hop came from Jamaica. You know what I mean? From the dance, to the fashion, to the screw face, to the attitude, to the vibe, to, okay, niggas in New York is living in a band of builders and shit like that. Jamaican said, we ain't got no motherfucking radio station in Jamaica, where do we party at? In the park. Did Jamaicans move to New York? We ain't got nowhere, no, no stadium or nothing to play no music at, where we gonna play? In the park. They did the same city there in Jamaica, they did it here. You know what I mean? Them was the most dangerous niggas in Brooklyn. Jamaicans. You know what I mean? Yeah. They was off the meat rack in the 80s and the 70s. And if you nigga want to go back from 73 or 4 on up, Bob Marley ran this motherfucker. Brooklyn? Brooklyn? Bob, Bob Marley, yeah. Okay. Bob Marley ran that motherfucker. Was you, was you, was he was ran you... it with love. It was nothing but love shit. Good vibes and all that shit. You know, that's when they had gates. That's when they had sesame or regular. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, and they had it at the gate. The gates was a, a regular store that got now ladies and shit like that in it and a whole bunch of shit that it don't got in it. But it's a store with a bulletproof glass. The only store like that around, it smelled like incense and shit. And it's a Jamaican nigga with dreads that he could drag for a block. He done stuffed him in a little ass hat sitting on the top of his head. <laughs> Lion fucking rings on their hand, you know what I mean? Right. All of them was chewing motherfucker uh, 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 sugar cane, you know? Right. And, and all them niggas had that pivot foot like a ballerina stance, you know, and lean back with it, you know? Right. And 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 and, and Jamaicans had it locked down. It was the first niggas you seen with automatic weapons and shit like that. So when you know what I mean? so when Raekwon was saying running up in gates and doing hits for high stakes, he they was talking. He was talking about trying to rob Jamaicans. Yeah, running up in the gates and Jamaica spots. Yeah. Well, I be there. Well, I be there. Yeah. See, I be needing. Uh, um, I be needing somebody from that next generation to provide some footnotes. I always suspected that Ray was talking about <laughs> robbing something, but. I didn't know what it was. I got it. Yeah, the case, that's it. You got to remember the niggas from the islands, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to remember, everybody that came up in hip-hop is from some fucking island. All the way to the great LL Cool J. All of everybody from the islands somewhere, man. And, and, and I noticed everybody from the islands had a private house in the 70s and 80s. You know? Yeah, when you say a Everybody, private house, which, when you say a private house, what you mean by that? They got two floors, one family or two family house. They got a basement. They got a backyard. They got a front yard. They got a parking lot. They got some of them in Queens had the garages, but a lot of people got them big brownstones in Brooklyn, and a lot of them was from the islands. Okay. 
You know, a lot of them, like all over Canarsie, all, all over Flatbush, it was mad people that had, you know, they, they got working families. You well, know, a lot of people from another country come over here and they get everything they need immediately, way before us. No doubt. So, 